Um, all right, so uh, I came across this quote. I wrote it down somewhere. I just don't remember who said it. I Googled it to find out who said it and couldn't. So let's just assume I said it, okay? <laughs> the cross of Christ is like a diamond because the more angles you look at it from, the greater your appreciation. I love that, that imagery of it. Actually, there's a cross we'll be selling afterwards uh, today, made out of glass, and when you tweak it a little bit, turn it, it shimmers. Uh, I love that, because every, every time you look at the cross, like a diamond, you, you spin it. Anybody got a really big diamond on their hand? Never mind. <laughs> every time you, you, you look at the cross from a different vantage point, a different angle, you, you see something different about it, which is what this series is that, that we've been doing called Vantage Point. We've been looking at the cross from different vantage points, different understandings of the crosses, and we make our way towards Easter. By the way, Easter is two weeks away, all right? So do you know what service you're coming to for Easter? we got the 645 beach service at Cardinal Approach, and I'm putting that service on notice. Been here two years. I'm told it's beautiful. I'm told God moves in a mighty way on the beach. Two years, gray, overcast, cold, and windy. <laughs> there has been no sunrise on the beach. Y'all need to work on this uh, for me. 645 Cardinal Approach. Uh, we got our 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock services on, on Easter Sunday. So if you're thinking about which one you're going to, and be thinking about this, who are you going to invite? Who are, who are you inviting with you uh, on Easter? Because people, I, I, when I first moved here, I asked folks, hey, when did you start coming and why did you start coming? Number one reason, a friend invited me. Last year we did kind of a church-wide study of our story and who we are. Ask, ask everybody in the church, who you when did you start coming and why did you start coming? Number one reason, somebody invited me. A friend told me about it. So what friend are you going to tell over the next couple of weeks to come join you Easter Sunday at 645, 9, or, or 11? Because the series we've been, we've been working on has been, been pushing us to this. Because when we get to Easter Sunday, the goal is this, is to help us to know what to do with Jesus. As we begin to look at this, at this cross from different vantage points, it's, it's about helping us make an understanding of what do we do with Jesus? What does this mean? And, Today's person we're going to look at, we know very little about. He is only in three verses in the entire Bible. In one verse in Matthew, one verse in Mark, one verse in Luke. Um, but if you've ever read the story of the crucifixion, you know this guy. If you've ever seen a movie uh, about the crucifixion, you've seen this guy. His name is Simon of Cyrene. I learned this week that's how you say it. I always thought it was Simon of Serene. It's Cyrene, according to all the smart people, right? says this from Mark's Gospel. Simon, a man from Cyrene, <coughs> Alexander and Rufus' father. So that means Alexander and Rufus were his... Okay, it's not, I know y'all are going to say Jesus because we're in church and that's always the correct answer. I want you to remember, what were his son's names? Alexander and Rufus, don't forget that. Simon, a man from Cyrene, Alexander and Rufus' father, was coming in from the countryside. They forced him to carry the cross, meaning the Roman soldiers forced him uh, to carry the cross. And so to kind of give you a visual demonstration, we'll see. I've been running. I haven't been weightlifting. Okay. So there, there's a saying I use a lot, and perhaps you use it as well. We all have a cross to bear. Oh, so you know that saying. Uh, we all have a cross to bear. Uh, usually when I say it, it's kind of a snarky statement. It's like, oh, you're having to do something tough. You're having to work hard on something. Oh, we all have our cross to bear. Yet there's also some truth to it. We all have a cross we have to bear. Uh, th there's a difference, understanding, I, I want to say this, there's a difference between we all have our cross to bear and Jesus saying, pick up your cross and follow me. When Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me, what he's saying is we need to leave our old way and live a new way. We need to let go of our past and embrace the new life that Jesus offers. Literally, die to ourselves and follow him. But we all have our cross to bear as a has a different feeling. It's, we all understand there, there's, a, there's a weight, there's a heaviness, there's a pain, there's a hurt, there's a brokenness, there's a difficulty, a calamity that feels like the weight, the weight of the world is on us and it bears down on us. And, and if, you can't, if you can't avoid it, if it's a cross you have to bear, if you can't get rid of it, it just kind of weighs on you. And Simon knows what it's like to feel the weight of, of the cross. He, he carried the cross. Um, 
Jesus wasn't going to make it to his execution. The Roman soldiers were concerned. Simon comes from what we would call today modern-day Libya. Um, that's where he was from. So he journeyed over a thousand miles to get to Jerusalem. And we don't know what happened. We don't know why he got caught up in the hubbub of the execution that was going on. All we know is that Jesus, if you've seen the Passion of the Christ, you know this. Jesus keeps falling because of the weight of the cross. And the Roman soldiers are concerned about this because evidently you're supposed to show up to your execution alive. Right? It's, it's, poor, it's poor form to show up already dead. Right? And so they're concerned because they beat him and they flogged him. And so they look at Simon. They know that Jesus can't make it if he has to keep bearing this weight. And so they grab Simon and say, carry the cross. And that wasn't part of his plan. A lot of times the cross we have to bear is never part of our plan. It wasn't the idea that he wanted. Yet, yet they grabbed him and carried it. And I, I don't know. The Gospels don't record his reaction. Was he upset? Was he angry? Did he say, this isn't fair? This isn't right? Did he protest? Did he, did he try and get out of it? Was he embarrassed? Was he ashamed? I mean, as he's walking through the crowds and everybody's looking at him, did he think, they think this cross is my cross, this is not my cross. Was he upset about that? And what about his sons? What were their names again? What about Alexander and Rufus? Where were they? Who was taking care of them? Did they follow him? What happened to them at this it's hard to bear the weight of the world and worry about other people, ain't it? What we don't know is um, what happened afterwards. The Gospels don't record that part of the story. Did Simon stay and watch the execution? Was he there when they said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Did he feel the ground shake when Jesus died and the earthquake came? Was he in Jerusalem for the resurrection? Did he hear the stories? Is he one of the Cyrenians that's mentioned in the book of Acts that heard the good news of Pentecost and gave their lives to Christ? The Gospels don't say it, but I think he has to have. Because his name was... What was it? What were his kids' names? How do you know that? <laughs> Let me ask you this. If he's a random guy they pick out of the crowd that just walks away, we never know his name's Simon from Cyrene. We never know he has two sons named Rufus and Alexander. So he must have been part of the group. He must have been, he must have been one of the ones that can tell the story of I was there and I had heard and I had saw. Otherwise, we would never know who he was. He told the stories of, I know what it's like to bear the weight of the cross. I've been thinking about that this week. I mean, what would it be like to see the cross from Simon's vantage point? As I thought about that, I began to think of the cross that I have to bear. Well, perhaps maybe the cross sometimes you have to bear. And the weight. How every step you take, that pain and that hurt and that heartache, and it made me realize that, like, Simon, I didn't ask for this. This wasn't part of my plan. This wasn't how I dreamed things were going to go. It was just thrust upon me, and I, I have to carry the weight. And I'm angry about it at times, and I'm upset about it, and I protest, and I say it's not fair at times. And then other times I'm worried that the weight might be more than I can bear. And what will happen all this bearing down on me. And then there's the moment in the gospel that they don't record. It, that moment when Simon uh, takes the cross and hands it back to Jesus. It's not mine to bear. Never mind. Simon's vantage point of the cross had to be one of sweet relief. That understanding of letting the weight of the world off my shoulders. Realizing this is something I no longer have to carry on my own. It was never mine. There's a young lady here today that knows this story all too well of what it's like to bear the weight of, of the cross. 
of what it's like to feel the weight of the world upon you, maybe thrust upon you by, by other folks' choice, other folks' actions, and sometimes our own, but what it's like to feel that weight bearing down on you, and at the same time, the understanding of what it's like to have the sweet relief of letting Christ handle it and not you. Her name is Becky, and she is part of the New Start Ministries uh, that we're supporting uh, this month, and I want her to come on up here and tell you uh, her story. So let's welcome Becky. Here, you want to right, come up here? Oh, hold on, Becky. I'm technology challenged. This thing here only weighs about 25 pounds. 
it sure got heavy. That weight you've been carrying weighs on you a lot more. Today is a good day to lay it down. Whatever it is. Give your cross to Jesus so that you may be free. It is not your cross to bear. It is His. Let's pray. God, each of us in this room has some type of cross that we all have to bear. Something that weighs on us, that's heavy on us. I give you thanks for, for Becky and for her willingness to share her story of the, the pain and the hurt that was thrust upon her. Like Simon, we don't get to make a choice of what cross we're going to carry. Sometimes it's through our brokenness and sometimes it's through the brokenness of others. But that cross can weigh on us. Give us strength and courage today, God, to let it go. To turn our cross back over to you. So that we may be free. May we experience that amazing grace and sweet relief. Amen. When I was Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks unto God, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, he said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And he gave thanks unto God. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples. He said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood. This is the blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you should drink of it in remembrance of me. And today we come in remembrance of all that Christ has done for us. We come in remembrance of a man named Simon of Cyrene and his two sons, Rufus and Alexander. And that he knows what it's like to carry the weight of the world. And just as we know what it's like, what it's like to bear the weight of a cross. And like Simon, may we turn it over. And may we be free. Let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever.